Brannigan. Good evening, Doctor. Why does Dr. Tippett claim you're the main reason he keeps working, despite his fatigue? If it wasn't for him, I probably would have left the Pembroke years ago. Dr. Tippett does not think of you as just a nurse anymore, does he? If you're suggesting he's not taking my gender into consideration when it comes to medical practice and knowledge, I really hope he doesn't. Goodbye, nurse. Call me if you need assistance. How may I help you, Jonathan? Thank you, my lady. I hope to see you again soon. Good evening, Nurse Brannigan. Good evening, Doctor. Do you require medical assistance, Nurse? Thank you for your concern, but I'm fine. Goodbye, Nurse. Call me if you need assistance. Good evening, Milton. Good evening, Doctor. Still trying to save lives. Do you know that Nurse Hawkins is thinking of leaving the hospital? That's not a surprise. We've talked about it already. Does it not bother you? Sometimes I think she may be right. We should run away while we can. The question is, where can we go? Where is it safe? I'd like to see your goods. Wise choice, Dr. Reed. A reliable gun is what everybody needs these days. Good evening, Nurse Hawkins. Good evening, Dr. Reed. Do you need medical help yourself, Nurse? I'm fine, really. I just need to sleep. Goodbye, Nurse Hawkins. It's still more coming. How can we be sure we're making it? I'm quite busy right now, Dr. Reed. Tell me, Waverley, what do you think of Dr. Strickland's enthusiasm for his experimental research? Strickland is playing with his patients' lives for pride and glory. Now that, sir, is unethical. Are you thinking about something in particular? Harvey Fiddick needs delicate surgery. I believe we should stick to the usual procedure, but my young colleague obviously disagrees. And are you not afraid that your rivalry with Strickland may be blinding you? Rivalry? I guess you could call it that. But I will never be childish enough to let my personal feelings affect my judgment. Why do you wish to lead this surgery? I strongly believe that Mr. Fiddick should not be butchered to test an unproven procedure. If you are going to lead this surgery, I'm trusting you to assume the consequences of your actions, whatever the result. I'm not the kind of man who runs away from his responsibilities, Dr. Reed. There is no need for you to be looking over my shoulder. Do you need my assistance? Not at all. I'm sure that you are used to gaining people's trust with your impressive skills. Well, it will not be the case with me. What can you tell me about the recent commotion in the hospital? Nothing like this would have happened if we'd had enough staff and proper shifts. So you don't think the blame is ours? We all hold fast here, Dr. Reed. Our methods may differ, but we are all trying to make a difference. Thank you for your time. We'll talk later. How can we be 
sure we're making a difference. As for me. Good evening, Dr. Strickland. And good evening to you, Dr. Reed. Can I be of any help? I located the shop, but it was vandalized, and the owner is missing. All I found was your order. I was afraid of such bad news. People are so desperate they're ready to burgle a shop for drugs. That's quite a list you ordered. Opium, sodium hypochlorite. It can't be just headaches you're trying to cure. This dreadful influenza, of course. I already ran some tests on hopeless cases. Without success, I must admit. Do you realize you could create a lethal poison? correct dosage. Then there are the legal ramifications. Is this not true of any medical substance, Dr. Reed? However, if you would agree to improve it, I'd be glad to accept your help. As long as you promise to be scrupulous with your experiments, I may try to gather these substances and even help improve upon the mixture. That's all I'm asking for, Dr. Reed. That's all I'm asking. I want to know about these secret tests you run, and if they can save people from this epidemic. Speak to me now, Thoreau. I know I may sound presumptuous, but I'm just following your steps, Dr. Reed. I'm casting away the shadows of ignorance by daring to face them. Self-confidence is essential in our line of work, my young colleague, but only if tempered with the correct amount of cynicism. But you never doubt yourself, Dr. Reed. I've read all your articles and books. You performed the most daring research during the war. You have my support, Dr. Strickland. I know exactly what it feels like to battle an unknown disease with only your mind and force of will to help you. Thank you, Dr. Reed. You don't know what that means to me. Do you need my medical attention, dear colleague? I would have been confused if anyone other than you had asked that question, Dr. Reed. But your help is welcomed. There is no shame in helping each other. We're colleagues, after all. Many doctors I have known are too cynical to think that way. Goodbye, Dr. Strickland. I can't let Strickland put his patients at risk with opium. Perhaps an adjusted formula will deliver more of a placebo effect. But in the circumstances, I'm willing to give you You always knew the words to calm the ch- Good evening, Mr. Fiddick. Good evening, Dr. Reed. Any news about my operation? Is there anything else that's bothering you? Can I help in any way? I'm all right. Considering the state of this place, I should consider myself lucky, I guess. Goodbye for now, Mr. Fiddick. I'll see you later. You always knew the words to calm the children, Helen. As for me, what a blundering idiot. Good evening, Doctor. How is my son doing? Do you require medical attention as well, Mrs. Goswick? I have other concerns right now, Doctor. But I'm fine, thank you. Goodbye, Mrs. Goswick. Good evening, Mr. Goswick. How are you? I'm okay. How painful is your throat, Mr. Goswick? So painful I'd rather not talk at all, Doctor. Why did your mother have you hospitalized here? She seems convinced this is a bad hospital. My mother just wants the best for me. She won't rest while I'm here. She'd go all the way to hell and back to help me. Is your mother bothering you? As your doctor, I can ask her to leave you alone if you would prefer. That's tempting, doctor. But you have no idea what my mother is capable of. She would tie herself to my bed if you asked her to leave. Pembroke Hospital may look unorthodox, but rest assured you're in good hands here. It's not me you have to convince, Dr. Reed. It's my mother.
Do you need any help? I'm afraid I may, sir. I don't mean to be a burden. I will see you later. I have to go now, sir. But don't hesitate to contact me if you need any help. I'm all right. Don't waste your time with me. The flower's dying. It needs water. Strickland's project could be dangerous. I have a mind to report him to Dr. Ackroyd. Good evening, Dr. Strickland. And good evening to you, Dr. Reed. Can I be of any help? I have managed to improve the mixture by diluting it. Have you ever heard of Sir Joseph Francis Olive or the placebo effect? No, I don't think so. Why? A placebo is a substance or procedure that has no actual physical effect. You made a placebo of my project. Why? Research has established that a placebo, as long as the subject believes in the effect, can provoke a positive physiological reaction. Really? That's fascinating. And you want me to, what, administer the placebo and see what occurs? Something like that, yes. Well, I'm a bit surprised, but I trust you, Dr. Reed. Please take the key to my cabinet and put this placebo there for future use. Goodbye, Dr. Strickland. As for me, what a blundering idiot. It's locked. At least Strickland can't kill anyone with this formula. It's locked, all right. It's locked. The flower's dying. It needs water.
Has anyone seen my daughter? I'm quite busy right now, Dr. Reed. Do you think Dr. Strickland has any chance of curing the Spanish flu by himself? His wish to cure the sick is not driven by pride, but by an idealistic view about our mission here. Honestly, I don't know which is worse. You consider him a good practitioner, yet you will not report his methods. Strickland may be a rival, but I will not use dirty tricks or regulations to prove him wrong. We are doctors, not politicians. Thank you for your time. We'll talk later. Good evening, Dr. Strickland. And good evening to you, Dr. Reed. Can I be of any help? Did you know Dr. Ackroyd never reported your experimental research? Despite the fact he doesn't agree with it. Really? I didn't suspect he knew about my work. I must confess I am surprised. Perhaps he thinks you should realize for yourself the danger of what you're doing. See how condescending he can be? My God, he can be so irritating. Do you need my medical attention, dear colleague? You don't have to worry about me, Dr. Reed. I am here to assist you, not to be a burden. Goodbye, Dr. Strickland. Can I be sure I'll not find your unconscious body in the house again? I promise you, you'll not find my unconscious body. For God's sake, how can you say such a thing? How can you refuse to listen? I tried to warn you for so long. No, I won't let my only son die. You promised me you'll stay alive. Your son lied to you, like the whole world lies to us. Good evening, Mr. Goswick. How are you? I'm okay. Admitted, Mortimer. Your mother had you hospitalized here because you tried to kill yourself. Yes, it's true. All right, then. This is the first time we've really shared information about your case. Shall we call this progress? Call it what you want, Dr. Reed. You can trust me. I won't report you to the authorities. My one and only concern is your health. I guess I should thank you, then. Can I help you in any way, Mr. Goswick? I wrote a letter for my mother. She was supposed to read it after... after my death. But... I suppose she doesn't have to read it now. I see. And is this letter still near the place where you tried to take your own life? Yes. And I don't want anyone reading my last words. I mean, I'm still here. If you bring me back that letter, then perhaps we'll talk.
I have to go now, sir. But don't hesitate to contact me if you need any help. Good evening, sir. Doctor. Never say so many. In this letter, Mortimer Goswick does nothing to hide his desire to die. I could give it to his mother, but doing so would betray his trust. Good evening, Mr. Goswick. How are you? I'm okay. I have retrieved your letter, Mr. Goswick. I can assure you that nobody read it but me. Thank you. This is for you, then. For your help. And for your silence. I think you should talk to your mother. It would be good for both of you. Thank you, Dr. Reed. I'll think about it. Now, please, let me be. I've read your letter, Mortimer. You wrote about an unbearable feeling of despair while the world crumbles around you. Tell me more about it. There's nothing more to say, really. It's hurtful, it's unbearable and I don't ask anyone to understand what I feel. This hospital seems to be falling apart, but in the circumstances, I'm willing to give you the benefit of the doubt. Despair is a deadly poison I've tasted myself, sir. We're only tempted to drink it because we're terrified by the uncertainty of the next minute. I know that perfectly, Doctor, for I waited for so long, hoping that the next minute would be less unbearable. Oh. 
I have to go now, sir. But don't hesitate to contact me if you need any help. Good evening, sir. Doctor. This hospital seems to be falling apart. But in the circumstances... Good evening, Doctor. How is my son doing? Mortimer is extremely vague as to his motivations for committing suicide. Tell me more about what you know. As you say, Mortimer had no reason to die. All he said to me was that he wanted to make the world a better place, but couldn't. Why did your son feel so useless when facing the world? I think it was more that he could only see the melancholy facets of life. He couldn't help but dwell on such things. What do you think he meant by making the world a better place? Mortimer has always been a sensitive soul. He wouldn't talk to anyone for months after his father passed. It's like he carries everyone's sadness with him. Your son wished to die, Beatrice. Why did you hide such crucial information? Are you not aware suicide is a crime? Mortimer could be thrown in jail. I can't let that happen. I won't. I understand you fear the legal consequences, Mrs. Goswick. But don't you realize your silence significantly affects your son's case? All my son needs is help and comprehension. Not judgment and punishment for what he may or may not have done. I have read your son's suicide note. It was not an impulsive gesture. Nor was it his first attempt. He threatened to kill himself a few times before. But I never thought he would dare to punish me this much. Punish you? Why? I've known for a long time he was not happy with his life. But I always hoped he cared enough to avoid making me suffer like this. Do you realize your son could try to kill himself again? He might succeed next time. I think about it every minute. But I won't stop fighting for my son's future. That's how much I love him. Your determination is laudable, but you are in a state of denial, Mrs. Goswick. Your son has a very strong death wish. How dare you talk to a mother like that? Talk to me like that. I'm only trying to be honest, Mrs. Goswick. As painful as this fatal end may be for you, you have to accept this is a possibility. No, I'll never accept it. If my son was to die under your care, well, you have no idea what I'm capable of, Dr. Reed. Goodbye, Mrs. Goswick.
Good evening, Mr. Goswick. How are you? I'm okay. the peace I was looking for. Mother, were you right all along? I'm so sorry. 